As usual, we're gonna be doing something very different today. That feels like a weird sentence. Anyway, for anyone unfamiliar with the channel, I make something different every week, and that could be something from a dumpster shed to an interactive wall to a stupid robot that just throws slippers at you. And today, we are doing chicken stuff. Good morning, chickens. Whee! Look how friendly these chickens are, though. These are the kind of chickens that I'm willing to make fancy things for. We are straight up chicken hipsters. We got on the chicken bandwagon because my wife thought they were neat and wanted the fresh eggs. Hi, rooster. And now they are just a part of every household ever, it seems like, because the egg prices are crazy wonker bonkers. And I'll of course be doing all the logical, maybe standard things one would expect for automating chicken life. But for anyone more familiar with this channel, I like to do crazy stuff. So I definitely have some crazy curveballs for you as well. Cause you know what? Water falls from the sky, but you know what doesn't? Food. So let's see if we can fix that. And it may just be chicken stuff, but once you start talking about automating things, we nerds get excited. So there's a lot I'll be trying to bust out for this one. So to visualize that craziness, here's the to-do list. Sorry for anyone claustrophobic out there, so let's put that away and get started with the laziest feature of all, the automatic chicken door. All right, before I get there, it's time to tell you a story. Once upon a time, my wife suddenly had chickens and I needed to urgently make a chicken coop right off the bat. And I happened to have a door, which was great but it was a crappy indoor door that I knew was gonna be temporary, cause guess what? Indoor doors don't work well for outdoors. So we need to replace that anyway, which works great because today the main thing is to make this automatic door that'll let the chickens in and out at scheduled time. So look at that beauty. Oh yeah. Yeah, temporary. All right, let's get it out. So the thing about already having a temporary door is it happens to be the exact size of the door I'm about to need to build. So it is here by my outline. I spent a solid chunk of time trying to integrate some old windows that just were not the right size before eventually deciding that I want to build a door this century and just building it out of wood like a normal person. I got the green light to use the excess chicken wire from the garden, so I used that to help round out the door. The footage didn't capture the wire very well, so it just kind of looks like I'm chopping the air, which is definitely what's happening here. Then it was time for the door within a door, doorception, and making it pretty. Yeah. Now we just have to make it actually solar powered. But hey, at least it worked like a door at this point. Then I set up the solar power so that it would have ongoing charge and it's gone, no charge. It was actually pretty cool for the few minutes it did have power, but since continuing to have power is pretty important, the chicken door turned out to be more than a little disappointing. To be fair, we have limited sunlight. But to be unfair, even when I plugged in a fresh set of batteries in the alternate power source, it burned through those in like a day and a half. So anyone here for ideas on automating chicken stuff for yourself, definitely buy a different door. Anyway, that brings us to food. Fun fact, chickens eat that. And their food is pretty well supplemented with stuff like table scraps and all the greens from yard work. I thought they'd just like to pick through the greens for bugs and stuff, but they just straight up eat it. Who wouldn't want to eat some nice, delicious lawn? Big pile of salad. Eat up, everybody. And it's crazy what chickens will eat. For instance, guess what's good to feed chickens to help them lay eggs? Eggshells. It's got all the things they need to make eggshells. They'll just eat it into the chicken bin. The first tactic for lazy food management is pretty obvious, a bigger feeder that can hold way more food. I was gonna repurpose an old trash can, but my wife found this thing for free, which made things really convenient, which is great when you're aiming for something lazy to begin with. And here's Mr. Trash Can in action. Real simple, it holds more food than its predecessor, and that's nice. All right, I'm gonna take a nice break from that chaos and make a cricket farm. This next bit is a little crazy and definitely experimental, but the idea is that if there's a place within the coop for crickets to propagate, there could potentially be an ongoing source of protein for the chickens. I'm gonna set up a little cricket colony where they can breed and escape and get eaten by chickens. Poof. And now when the crickets are old enough to climb onto that, they'll be able to escape out into the chicken coop. That's part one. So there's a little checklist to make cricket land happen. They need places to hide. And as you can imagine, they need a source of water, but crickets are very dumb. So the source of water you give them is a wet sponge so that they don't drown. I did a few quick iterations of this, so let's condense it down to avoid having this devolve into the cricket experiment show. I made it harder for the crickets to escape, sealed off unintended escape routes, and did actual tests to see how many crickets came out. I reduced the number of greens because that caused it to become spider land instead of cricket land, and I ordered a box of 250 crickets online. This world's weird, and I'm being a weird part of it. Then I did a final test and was good to go. It's time for science. 
we got two. That means this works and it's time to put it in the chicken pen. Infinite crickets forever, hopefully. This setup does require a small amount of upkeep, but setting up a way to automatically feed the crickets to then automatically feed the chickens felt like it was getting a bit too far into the rabbit hole, and I have more confidence in the next experiment anyway. So not all the crickets got into the box, so uh, let's just demonstrate that chickens like crickets. Tis a feast. What are the chickens gonna do? They're gonna eat the... the... and that, and that, and... No, two and that. Sudden warm things! This one is gonna sound even crazier, but I actually think it'll work better and without any future upkeep. The idea is that there's dirt on top of wire mesh. When it rains, worms fall out. I'd actually done this experiment a long time ago and tediously counted how many worms fell out with certain amounts of water sprayed on and it actually seemed promising. I can't find that footage anywhere, but just imagine me sorting dirt for worms. Exciting stuff. So you might ask yourself, why would someone build a monstrosity like this? And the answer is, it's effective, and I actually ask the chickens, and they don't care that it looks ugly and uses the worst wood that I'm trying to get rid of. So, worked out great for everybody. Hopefully it'll provide them worms. And we'll lose a little bit of dirt over time, but we'll also gain a little bit of dirt over time, because the leaves will fall on it and decompose and all that other crap, and worms will eat it, and the cycle will continue, and worms will fall out, and it'll be great. Anyway, the idea is that particularly during rain, worms fall into the chicken run, and you better believe the chickens will find them. I doubt any will last long enough to multiply in the run itself, but hey, that'd be convenient too. Behold the infinite worm colony. I guess my theme for the crazy ideas on this one is to have food rain for chickens, so... But if it works, it works, and it should work, so... Yay! Anyway, I think we're all set on crazy food ideas, so it's time for water stuff. Beginning with the kiddie pool. The kiddie pool is the best. Not only is the entire plan for it to just leave it there and have it get water from the rain sometimes, you also need one if you want ducks. And ducks are adorable, so everything about this is good. The next part of this actually does involve repurposing an old trash can. You can get these little chicken water cups for super cheap online, so I'm just drilling holes, plugging those in, and the chickens can just go to town on this enormous water source of the trash can. The lid of the trash can is upside down to funnel rainwater into it, but this won't really cut the mustard, which brings us to gutters. This way the roof can help out with rainwater collection instead of just exclusively helping protect the chickens from the elements and blah 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 blah. Here's the end result, and I realize gutters and trash cans probably aren't the most exciting thing in the world, so we'll wrap this up, but hey, at least the chickens are probably excited about it. So there you go. For anyone used to my crazy build videos, I know it's not a human-seeking nerf turret, it's just chicken stuff, but hopefully I kept it from being too dry for you. And for anyone here looking for inspiration on automating their own chicken stuff, hopefully you got some ideas for the easy mode chicken life. Either way, have a good one.